Well, my gravel tire testing odyssey continues this time with an option out of Italy by way of France, because that's where these tires are made. Anyway, it is the Pirelli Cinturato Gravel M, and it is part of the new breed of tires that are really coming out into the market all the time nowadays. And I have been very impressed with these. They are one of the most versatile gravel tires I've used. Maybe even the best all-rounder I've used. Let's jump in and find out. And here are the 700 by 40 millimeter Cinturato Gravel M's that I tested. They tip the scales at 500 grams, which is heavy for that size, but there is a lot of rubber in these tires. Here is the all important tread pattern, which I'm gonna talk about a lot during this video. They have tall tread blocks and significant gaps between them, which is fairly unusual for gravel tires. Most gravel tires tend to have tightly clustered and low profile knobs. That's where the magic lives with the Cinturato Gravel M's. They have an excellently wide range of usability because of the abundant grip and that tread. Pirelli is taking their entry into the gravel market very seriously with two different tread patterns, M for mixed terrain, which is what we're talking about here, and H for hard pack terrain for sort of lighter gravel riding. Each tread pattern comes in both 700C and 650B and they have all of these sizes available for them. So they're not mucking around here. That's a huge amount of choice. They went so far as to develop the speed grip compound specifically for gravel tires. They haven't just sort of brought over a compound from another tire that they've made, which is something that's quite common from brands like Continental. In Australia, they're gonna set you back a fairly hefty $99.95, which is a fair bit of money. There's no escaping that. But that also just seems to be the reality of tire pricing nowadays. Australia, everything seems to be getting more expensive, unfortunately. It's interesting to see such an aggressive entry into the market from a brand that has no history of gravel. Clearly they see that it's an expanding market segment and they want a piece of that action. Tons of other brands have jumped into this segment with a gravel tire and gone 700 by 40 C. That's what you get, please buy it. But Pirelli has been a lot more accommodating of the different sizes and the fact that people want different things. So good work Pirelli. My review rig for this was the Grove RAD Aluminium Gravel Rocket. This is the second version of this bike that got fully rebuilt with the new SRAM Force ETAP AXS Wide. Since then, I've put about 800 kilometers and 40 hours on this setup, which is about the time I feel comfortable reviewing tires. I set up the wheels tubeless on the Bossy RD1 wheels and it was easy. They went on without a fuss and they haven't made a fuss since then. I use Tune One Shot sealant and that stuff seems to last literally forever, so I haven't had to do anything since I set them up. The new generation of sensibly designed rims and sensibly designed tires seem to just really get along with each other tubeless. Now let's talk about how they've been to ride and these have been my winter gravel weapons. I've ridden them in some properly awful weather with sticky clay, plenty of mud and gritty dirt everywhere. For me, they were the right tires at the right time. Light gravel tires can be very frustrating in winter because they don't have much grip. These are different though. The Cinturato Gravel M's are just crazy grippy. It is easily the most grip I've had from a gravel focused tire to date. The tread pattern means that they can bite into the terrain and just hang on to it well after most gravel tires would have given up their grip and become quite slidey. And you look at this tread pattern, it's not that far from your sort of lighter mountain biking tires, things like a Maxxis Icon for example. It is really straying into that kind of territory. When you're riding dirt, it just gives you that little bit more confidence to corner a bit more aggressively, pedal a little bit harder at times you maybe wouldn't have, and send it down descents knowing that you have the grip to kind of carry you. Here's some footage of me absolutely groveling my way up a crazy steep climb around 25% on very shifty gravel. These are the times I really appreciated the Cinturato Gravel M's. It's really refreshing to have this amount of confidence from a gravel tire. Even gravel tires that I quite like will sometimes surprise you by just kind of giving up grip. These don't really do that. The only surprises they gave me were good ones of, holy crap, I can't believe I've still got grip. Let's talk now about how they go in mud. And there's two ways you can look at it. They're either the best gravel tire I've ridden in mud or the least terrible gravel tire I've ridden in mud. I say it both ways because gravel tires tend to absolutely suck in mud. At least they have in all of my experience. They just don't have the tread to be able to bite in and go through it. It's all shallow, center, 
tightly packed treads and they are just not very good in mud. Panarace's Gravel King SKs, Schwab G1 Allrounds, great tires, bad in mud. The Cinturado Gravel Ms, by comparison, aren't useless or they're a lot less useless. They chop through the mud impressively well and once you're out the other side, they don't hang on to the mud, they just flick it out because of all the gaps between the tread. It clears quickly, which is just so good. Now there is a terrain where these aren't the most impressive and that's on the road. They feel like they roll fine from a speed perspective, not quite with the same zing as something like the Terra Speeds or the Schwalbe G1 All Rounds, but they're a little strange when you're cornering. It's one of the trade-offs from that tread pattern that makes them great when you're off-road. They're not amazing when you're on-road. It only takes a small amount of lean for the tires to start feeling vague. You move from the solid center tread into the pattern where there's a lot of gaps. And you do just get a sense that you're not in full contact with the road at those times and it starts to get a little bit vague and a little bit floaty. That's just something that you need to be aware of. For me, it's a trade-off that's more than worth it for the amount of grip you get off the road. The wear has been minimal and the tear has been basically non-existent. Here's a close look at the rear tire. And here's a close look at the front. As you can see, there's just so much meat left on both of them after 800 kilometers. There's many more hundreds of kilometers to come from these tires yet. Let's circle back to price and all of a sudden that 99.95 seems a lot more reasonable because you're going to get a long life out of them. Consider that the Continental Terra Speeds don't cost much less and they were absolutely cooked at around a thousand Ks. So keep that in mind if immediately you thought these were too expensive. Their dollar per dollar kilometer sort of value is a lot better than you might expect and it's a lot better than I've seen from a few other gravel tires. Let's examine where these fit in the market and I'd say they occupy quite an interesting space. I don't think they're for everyone. Those who do basic gravel grinding where things aren't too gnarly have plenty of other cheaper options that will serve their purpose just fine. I keep returning to the Schwab G1 All Rounds as an example for these people. It's just an excellent gravel tyre. For those in a wet climate who want a wide range of usability though should definitely have the Cinturado Gravel M's high on their list. They're just such a capable tyre. If I had to choose one tyre to use all year round as it stands today, this would probably be my choice. They are kind of overkill in nice weather and on your sort of basic compacted gravel roads, but it's worth it to know you've got that wide usable range when you need it, when you want to go a little bit more gnarly or when the weather starts to get bad. It's all about what gravel riding means to you. And I like to sort of push it a bit with my gravel riding, sort of up to the point where you think, eh, maybe a mountain bike would be better here. That's sort of about where I, uh, sort of nope out of my gravel riding. And that's really why I've come to like these tires so much. Again, I don't think they're for everyone, but for people who want a wide usable margin, they are a very good option. The Pirelli Cinturado Gravel M's are an impressive gravel tire. Tons of grip, a long wear life, and a diverse range of size options. Yes, you have to pay a decent price for them, but I think they justify it with how they perform and how long they last. There's a huge range of gravel tires in 2020 and it's really spoiling us with choice and I like that Pirelli has gone for something a little bit more hardcore than the standard gravel setup. It's a corner of the market that isn't quite as full and I'm glad to see quality options are starting to come out in it. The next steps for me then is to keep cracking on with my gravel testing odyssey because I really enjoy it and people seem to enjoy hearing about gravel tires. And I've already got a set of the Pirelli Cinturado H pattern ones. So these are the hard packed 650 by 45. I will start using these very soon, which I'm quite looking forward to. Hopefully it dries out a little bit. It's still August here and it's still a bit gross outside. Now these Pirellis do come to me from the Australian distributor of Pirelli FE Sports, but I assure you it is a fully independent review and they have absolutely no say in what I say about the tires. And that is where I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much as always for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that stuff really helps me out as a small channel. Thanks for watching, ride safe, stay healthy, and as always, I will see you next time.